Welcome to 3D Flow Academy. In this first episode, we will go through the basic workflow. I will use a sample dataset that you can download from the link in the video description below, or you can use your own photos. How to take pictures for photogrammetry is, however, a very different topic that we will go through in the following episodes. If you wish to take your own pictures, we suggest you start with a very easy subject, such as a tree stump or a rock. These are very easy subjects because in order to reconstruct 3D models from photos, any photogrammetry software first needs to understand the camera 3D position. In order to do so, key points, pixels that a software can easily recognize in a photo, must be found in all the pictures. Uniform surfaces such as blank walls or reflective and transparent surfaces are hard to shoot correctly, so for your first dataset, stick with something textured. We'll go over more complex subjects in the following tutorials. As you will see, using an easy subject will give us nice results even with far from perfect photos. For example, these images were taken with a bad lighting condition, in this case direct sunlight, and with a bad depth of field. If you look closer at the images, you will see that the foreground is more in focus than the background in most photos. Got the pictures? Excellent! You can either download 3DF Zephyr free or the trial of 3DF Zephyr Lite over at 3dflow.net, and both are suitable for this tutorial. Please note that 3DF Zephyr is available for Windows platforms only. Simply follow the installation wizard and launch 3DF Zephyr. Make sure to have the latest NVIDIA drivers installed if you have an NVIDIA card, so that you can take advantage of the CUDA technology to speed up the processing. From the workflow menu, select New Project. The New Project Wizard will pop up. The additional options in the first page allows you to queue the different reconstruction phases or to enable masking. We'll go through these over the next tutorials, so for the time being, simply click Next. Drag and drop your images from the Windows Explorer or use the plus button to select all your images. Please note that we are feeding directly the images into Zephyr. Never crop, cut or alter your photos in Photoshop or other external software. Once you've added the selected images, click the Next button. This next page allows you to select a camera calibration. 3DF Zephyr is completely auto-calibrated, so most of the time you can simply click Next. 3DF Zephyr is made with 100% in-house built technology, which also means that we can give you the full control over the reconstruction process. You can either use our easy-to-use presets, an advanced mode, or a custom mode. For the time being, simply leave selected presets in the top right selection box. Select Close Range from the Category Combo box and Default as Preset. Default values are suitable for most scenarios, but consider using Deep, for example, if some of the photos gets discarded by Zephyr. You can find the description of each category and preset below each combo box. After you click Next, a session summary will be shown on screen. Make sure all looks good and then click Run. Zephyr will now process the Structure from Motion phase. This phase is tasked in auto-calibrating the camera internals, focal length, lens distortions and other parameters required to fully understand the used lens, and externals, the position and rotation of each photo or camera in 3D space. Let Zephyr crunch some numbers for a while and you should come back to the Sparse Point Cloud Reconstruction Summary. Click Finish. You can use these buttons in order to navigate your workspace, Orbit, Orbit with Pivot, and Free Look Controls. Orbit and Orbit via Pivot behave in the same way, with the exception that in the latter, you select the pivot point each time you left click in the scene. Simply left click and move the mouse to rotate around the object and use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. You can pan or zoom by keeping the left control or left shift key pressed down while moving the mouse. The free look mode, like a first person shooter game, lets you move in the workspace with the WASD keys. You can look around by keeping the left mouse button clicked and move on the vertical axis using Q and E. You can left click any of the thumbnails in the camera navigator to quickly overlay your photo with the current workspace. Each blue pyramid you see is the corresponding camera information for that photo. We are now ready to generate the dense point cloud. This process is called multi-view stereo and is a process in which depth maps are generated and fused together. Please note that this is not an interpolation but rather a very complex problem, so expect your computer to crunch a little longer in this stage. From the workflow menu, select Dense Point Cloud Generation and then click Next. Like before, let's stick with Close Range and Default, or try changing it to Fast. Click Next and then Run. After a while, a Dense Point Cloud will be generated. 
We can repeat this process as many times as we'd like until we are happy with our resulting dense point cloud. For example, I am now repeating the process with the close range high detail settings. As you can see, Zephyr keeps all the reconstructions made within the same project. I can toggle on and off every object with the respective checkbox or enable an item only by left clicking while keeping the left control pressed. Dense point cloud, mesh and texture mesh steps can all be repeated as many times as you'd like in the same project. We will go over the point cloud cleaning tools and filters in future tutorials. So for the time being, we will simply proceed with the mesh generation. Simply select mesh extraction from the workflow menu. Since I have two different point clouds in my workspace, I now have to select the input dense point cloud. Select your desired input point cloud and then press next. Try to experiment a little bit with the presets. For example, to understand how Zephyr deals with smooth surfaces and sharp edges with different presets. For example, I will now select close range and a default with the smooth surface. Click next and then run to start the processing. When the processing has finished, the user summary will pop up. Simply select finish. Before proceeding to create the textured mesh, let's do a very quick cleaning. Sometimes noise will create all these floating blobs. We can quickly remove them all by clicking the Select by Triangle tool. Select the correct mesh and the Connected Components method. These connected components will be then highlighted in red. Simply click the Delete Highlighted Elements button to delete these blobs from the generated mesh. More cleaning tools and filterings option will be discussed in future tutorials. From the workflow menu, now select Textured Mesh Generation. You can discard some photos from the texture generation, for example if some photos have a very different lighting. For this example, however, simply click Next, select your texture size and other parameters and then click Next and Run. To quickly straighten up our model, we can use the Gizmo tool to rotate around the desired axis. Our first textured mesh is now ready for export. Simply select Export Textured Mesh from the Export menu. In order to avoid displays issues in software such as MeshLab or Unity 3D, make sure to use the Local Rendering Reference System option. In future tutorials, we will go over many other tools, workflow tips and tricks, and more in-depth information. Feel free to comment, leave your feedback, or ask for a specific topic you'd like us to cover in the next video tutorials. Thank you for watching and don't forget to join us on our forum over at 3dflow.net or in our Facebook group 3dflow academy to connect with us.